What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to episode seven of Drop the Mitts Hockey Podcast. We have a very special guest today, uh, Logan Stankoven of the Kamloops Blazers and the 47th overall pick in the in the 2021 NHL Draft to the Dallas Stars. Logan, how you doing, buddy? How's your summer going? Doing good, thanks. Uh, yeah, summer is being busy. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, so how, how often you've been skating, you've been in the gym, what, what's your summer been looking like so far? Yeah, it's been uh crazy busy, just, uh, you know, first, first year of pro coming up. So, uh, just been in the gym lots, uh, on the ice, you know, three, four times a week. So, um, yeah, it's been a grind, but, uh, if you want to get better, yeah, you got to put the work in and, um, it's definitely going to be an adjustment coming up this season. So trying to get, uh, as prepared as possible for that. Yeah, for sure, man. So I want to I want to take you um, playing in front of your hometown, obviously Kamloops, and playing for the Blazers. Um, what what was that experience like being able to play in front of family and just where you're from? What what was that experience like? Yeah, it was it was really good. Um, definitely, there's there's pros and cons of playing in your hometown. A little bit of added pressure, but um, for me, it was just uh, nice to live at home, see my family every day. Uh, obviously home cooked meals, which was pretty cool. So, um, yeah. And then your friends and family coming to each game. So I just kind of embraced that and I uh, enjoyed the ride for as long as possible. It was a quick four or five years here, uh, especially with COVID. We didn't have, um, a couple playoff runs that were, you know, maybe we had, uh, had a chance to, to win or, or go along, but, uh, that was cut short. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun here in this organization and, uh, yeah, now it's uh, time to move on to uh, new things. Yeah, what do you think that adjustment's going to be like? You saw a little bit of that, like during development camp, being away. Um, how how have you like how are you going to approach that adjustment? Kind of being away from home, being in obviously the U.S. and t- in Dallas, and um, you know, what are you going to do to adjust to that? And how do you think that's going to go? Um, I think it's going to be a learning curve for sure. Um, I have lived away from home before. When I was fourteen, I moved away to play. Um, at, an, at an academy uh, in my Bantam draft year, so before I got drafted the Blazers. But, uh, yeah, um, it was different because I was living with a Billet family, but now I'll be on my own. So, um, yeah, time to grow up a little bit and, um, yeah, cook your own meals and uh, take care of uh, your place or wherever I'm going to be be living, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be different, but uh, it's all part of, of growing up and becoming an adult. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so I want to take you back to your the U18 and the U20 um, World Juniors. Um, obviously, you scored the winning goal. Um, what what was that experience like? And what is winning the gold for Canada? Like, what is that like for um, a kid that grew up in Canada where, like, for us, I mean, it's obviously a big tournament for, you know, kids in the U.S., but obviously for kids in Canada, it's a huge tournament for you guys. Um, what was it like being able to experience that and kind of play with your buddies and uh, winning gold. Uh, yeah, I was really fortunate to be part of, uh, I guess, yeah, two or three gold medal teams now at U18 and then both world junior tournaments. So, um, yeah, not many guys get the opportunity to, to play, but, uh, to win, you know, three gold medals, uh, yeah, it's just the, the best feeling and that's hockey Canada standards. So, um, you know, best kids from across the country, they expect you to, to win the gold medal and if you don't then um you know that's just uh not getting the job done so i think that's just the standard that they've kind of uh passed on along the year uh along the way and uh throughout the year so it was nice to to win gold on home soil uh for a few years see down in, in i think it was is uh, dallas actually u18s so that was a really cool experience as well yeah so you talk about that standard and, and those high expectations how did you know, being a kid, because you really are a kid, man, and, and these kids that are playing, how do you manage those expectations? Um, because obviously, like you said, they're they're so high and it's the standard for Canada. How do you manage those expectations and, um, you know, kind of come back down to earth a little bit and just make things more simple? Like, how do you manage those? Um, I think realizing that uh, every single player on the team are, are top players with their club teams, right? So, Um, obviously some guys aren't going to get as much ice time as they would like, but it's about accepting your role and, uh, listening to the coaches and whatever role you're given, you do that to the best of your abilities. And, um, if you do that, then that's all you can ask. And and hopefully at the end of the day, 
yeah, you're standing on the blue line with gold medals around your neck. So that's basically what they kind of preach to us. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what it's been through every Hockey Canada experience that I've had so far. Yeah, so, and you've also pretty much worn a letter um, pretty much, like, since 2020, I'd say, right? And um, so, like, 2020, you wore the A for Kamloops. Um, and then, obviously, the U18 Canada team, you wore the A. And then for the past two years, you've worn the C. Um, what, what is – how much of an honor is it to, to wear a letter for your team? And, um, you know, what qualities do you take pride in um, as a leader? And, and, like, what do you try to instill in your teammates? Um, yeah, I think it's a huge honor whenever you can get a letter on your chest. Um, I think that doesn't really change the way I act or how I approach the game. Um, I think, yeah, you definitely need to be, uh, you know, a bit more of a leader. Uh, you don't have to be too uh, vocal in the, in the room, but, um, somebody that just leads by example is always doing the right thing, uh, on the ice, but off the ice too. Um, you know, there's lots of kids, uh, younger kids and fans that come to the game and, um, eyes are always on you. So you got to make sure you're doing the right thing and, um, taking time for, uh, yeah, the kids or fans, um, yeah, it's just something that I've tried to um, kind of have uh, throughout my career so far. That's something that my parents have kind of instilled in me from a young age. That's awesome, man. Um, so kind of going back to like your days, WHL, um, what, what's your favorite barn besides Kamloops that you've played in? And um, yeah, what? so what's your favorite rink that you've played in, best environment, um, craziest environment? Like what's your favorite place that you've played in besides Kamloops? Um, well, probably my favorite place, like in terms of where I've played the best, I'd probably say, uh, tri cities. Yep. I've had some good games there. Um, trying to think where else craziest environment. I'd probably say Seattle. Their fans are pretty wild. Um, they have a good, uh, intro, uh, like before the game starts and they have these clappers that they hand up to the fans and it gets pretty loud in there. Um, Trying to think what else. Um, I always like the Kamloops Kelowna rivalries. I always, uh, I always enjoyed those, um, especially if, if you're winning. If you're losing, it's not much fun. But uh, the fans always come out, uh, whether uh, it's in Kamloops or in Kelowna. You know, the fans come out, and uh, it's a big rivalry. So I'd say those are the three places that uh, are, are fun to play. What What do you think that you're going to miss most about playing in Kamloops? Um, you know, aside obviously. You said you're from, you know, you are from there, family's there. What other things are you going to miss most about playing uh, playing in Kamloops? Um, definitely my teammates. Uh, some of those guys I played with for four, four straight years. So I got close with a few of those guys and, um, yeah, some of my best buddies. So miss those guys. Um, definitely the fans. The fans, uh, um you know, as, as I was a 16 year old and went down to my 17, 18, as soon as I got older, um, you know, the fans started piling into their rank and not that they didn't before, but, um, I think there was anticipation, especially leading up to the, the Memorial cup where uh, the fans would come out and, uh, there'd be some loud games and the seats would be packed. So that's always fun to play in front of. Um, and, uh, yeah, even this past year or past couple of years with the playoff, uh, playoff runs that we had, um, yeah, full buildings. So, those are probably the main things that I'll miss. Yeah. So kind of shifting towards um, your draft year and your draft experience. Um, so you, your pre-draft like comparison, you kind of mentioned you, you have a uh, similar game to Brandon Gallagher um, that never back down attitude. Um, are there any players now that you try to like emulate your game after? And were there any players that you really looked up to growing up um, that you tried to like mock your game after? Um. I used to love like watching Crosby, obviously. Um, I think just uh, how he makes everyone around him better. Um, you know, always making the right play and he just sees the ice so well. Like uh, I just kind of admire his hockey IQ. I'd probably say now, um, like for smaller guys, I like watching like Braden Point or Cole Caulfield. Those, those two guys, you know, on the smaller side, but uh, can put the puck in the net. Yeah, for sure. So, Obviously, you had kind of like a uh, unique draft experience with COVID and everything. Um, kind of take the listeners through like your draft experience, what the combine looks like, um, 
and you know, being able to share that experience with your family being home and, and what it was like getting that call from Dallas. Yeah, so our year we actually didn't have a, a draft combine. Uh, it was still COVID going on at the time and our draft was uh, virtual as well. So uh, we didn't get to experience that, which was too bad. But um, for um, being at at home with, with friends and family, uh, obviously the first day or the first night, I, my name wasn't called. So that was disappointing. Um, you know, from a young age, I guess my goal is to be drafted in the first round. And you always, you always strive for more, right? And when you don't get drafted in the first round, it's definitely disappointing and, and upsetting. But um, I think it just makes you hungrier. So um, the next day, my, my name was called in the second round. And um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to, to hear my name. Yeah, you know, you mentioned that, you, you know, you didn't hear your name in the first round. But obviously, I think now looking at things, there are definitely teams that I, I would assume wish they took you in the first round. How, how do you use that as like fuel? Um, obviously not hearing your name. Like, is that something that really motivates you? Um, and is that something that you're going to kind of use as fuel um, throughout your career? Because obviously there's some great players that have gotten their names called later and have gone on to have unbelievable careers. So like I said, how are, how are you going to use that? Do, do you consider that like a, um, a motivating factor for you? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's hard to say right now, obviously, because I haven't played a game, but Yep. Um, yeah, that's, that's my goal is to, uh, make it there and, and hopefully, uh, someday look back and, and, uh, kind of prove those teams, uh, wrong. Um, you know, that, that they didn't take me and, um, at the same time you can't, you can't really hold a grudge against them. There's so many other great players, but sure. definitely like tip on my shoulder and makes me want to work harder and, and prove those other guys wrong that, um, Hey, I should have, I should have went in the first round or, um, you know, because, you know, you always have you got to have that self-belief in yourself. For sure. And and so throughout that process, were there any other teams that you kind of really felt good about that you met with? Um, we had Zach Benson on a few weeks ago and we we asked him about any unique like draft questions that he got to ask, because obviously you hear these like crazy questions that GMs ask. Did you have any crazy like weird questions asked or like experiences? Were there any other teams that you really felt good about? Um, I'm, I think I had a couple, like, uh, just like not weird experiences, but just odd questions. I can't remember what teams, um, every year there's, there's always uh, a few odd questions from teams, but, um, the teams that I thought, uh, I had the best interviews with or, you know, kept coming back were Boston, uh, LA and Seattle. Those are the three teams. <laughs> really interested so yeah we would have liked you here in boston for sure man like we're kind of yeah. like ourselves now with some of these draft picks and it's it's rough but um yeah so this past season you had an incredible year dude you you know 34 goals 63 assists in 40 48 games which is unreal and even the year before that you had even better numbers um what areas in your game do you pride yourself on and what areas are you looking to like most improve um, at the next level once you get to, to Texas? Um, I think like my strengths are uh, like my acceleration, my first few steps. Um, I think my agility, like down low in the corners, um, just like cutbacks or uh, taking pucks to the net. And then, uh, yeah, my hockey IQ, I think I see the ice pretty well and, can find the open guys, but at the same time, uh, you know, if I have a shot, I'll take it. So I think those are the two main things. Um, and then I think like things that I've tried to work on, um, over the past few years would be, uh, yeah, like my playmaking. Um, I think before I was more of a shooter, but if you can have, uh, both in, uh, I guess your repertoire, then that's huge. So that's something that I've been, uh, trying to work on. And then I think just my strength for me being a smaller guy, um, going up against men now, it's going to be tough in the corners or in front of the net. So you got to be able to withstand uh, the the cross checks or uh, the battles you have in the corner. Yeah. So obviously, a few weeks back, you attended uh, Dallas Stars development camp. Um, what was your experience like um, hanging out with those guys, getting on the ice with those guys, and what was your biggest takeaway from uh, from that experience? Um. Yeah, it was fun. It was just all the prospects. It wasn't anything too, too crazy. Um, 
you know, it's nice to meet the newly drafted guys or uh, the free agent signings, um, kind of get to know everybody and obviously reconnect with the, some of the coaches and the trainers. And, um, you know, you haven't seen them since, I guess, last main camp. So um, it's, it's good to build those connections, right? Cause you never know how long you're going to be with this organization and you gotta, gotta be able to know these guys personally because they're the ones taking care of you and helping you out along the way. Um, are there any guys like on the NHL team that have reached out to you to just kind of give you any pointers, um, any advice on the transition from junior to pro? Um, are there any, you know, any of the older guys reach out to you? Um, no, no, I haven't had any uh, older guys reach out. But uh, I train here in Kamloops with uh, a couple of AHL guys and uh, Joe Hicketts, who played World Juniors and uh, – he played with Iowa the past few years, and um, I think he, he got a couple games in with the, the Red Wings a few years back, and now he's playing, in, um, or he just signed with L.A. So that's the guy that's been around, uh, you know, the AHL and has a stint in the NHL, so he knows what, uh, what it kind of takes, and um, it's always nice to hear from him. Uh, he has a lot of pointers for me going to my first year of pro. Yeah, so I, I also want to bring up, uh, obviously you put up unbelievable numbers, you know, these past couple of years, you've won multiple awards. Um, one thing I wanted to t- kind of touch on was how you won the WHL Humanitarian of the Year Award um, and the Dana Bronze Award. Um, you know, you committed countless hours as a Hockey Gives Blood player ambassador. What does your work in the community mean to you? Um, and what does it mean to give back to your community? Yeah, it's huge. Um, I think you're more than just a hockey player. And uh, for me, yeah, playing junior in my hometown, um, like I said before, the spotlight's on you and there's there's a lot more pressure. But um, I think you can kind of take that pressure and, and turn it into good things. And um, for me growing up, I had lots of people uh, mentor me and, and help me out and give back. So now it's my turn to kind of reciprocate that and um, trying to do my part to, to help out and uh, do things in the community like uh, – this year uh for one of the games i was i was actually injured i was supposed to play in the game but it was my my charity night and we ended up raising with hockey gives blood um in conjunction with them we ended up raising like 40 grand or something um towards hockey gives blood and um so that was that was a great night Uh, i think that was my bobblehead night as well so um it was nice just to see that i could raise that much for a great cause and um for people in need of, of blood transfusions or um whatever it may be. And then, yeah, the Dana bronze award was pretty cool. So um, yeah, it's always just good to give back. And that's something that, yeah, my parents always have preached to me as well. Now, is that an organization that you're going to continue to work with even um, as you transition to the next level? Um, I'm not too sure um, about that just because I don't know if uh, like I was a, a player ambassador, so they, they mostly do it in junior. Um, I'll still uh, give blood and, and do my part, but um, I'm not too sure if Hockey Gives Blood has made it way to, made its way to the NHL just yet or, or to the AHL. So I think they've just kind of stuck to junior. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was glad I could do my part with them for uh, four or five years. Yeah, I was I was able to go online and see, you know, there's a link and everything. So once I post this, I'll I'll post the link with it. So if anyone wants to donate or um, kind of give back, I'll include that link. So um, obviously, incredible work that you've done on and off the ice. Um, I can't thank you enough for ha- you know for coming on and taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know how I know how crazy it must be. Obviously, you know you're getting ready for the season, so I can't thank you enough. Um, I know this is going to be an awesome, awesome interview um, to post out there. So, um, I, you know, again, I can't thank you enough, and I wish you the best of luck this season, buddy. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chris. Appreciate it. All right, see you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Talk to you later. Bye. See you, buddy.